So Michael Popak with a legal AF hot take. According to insiders, Donald Trump is losing confidence in his lead trial lawyer in the criminal case in New York, the election interference case. Uh, and that lawyer is Todd Blanche, formerly a, uh, an assistant U.S. attorney, well-respected uh, criminal defense lawyer, white-collar criminal defense lawyer. But he's not Donald Trump's cup of tea. He hasn't been aggressive enough as a practicing trial lawyer. I think he's been too aggressive, too unprofessional. Uh, too skating towards the edge of being unethical. But Donald Trump thinks he hasn't been uh, harsh enough. He hasn't attacked the judge, Judge Mershon and his family enough. And even when even when Mershon chastised in front of Donald Trump, Todd Blanche last week and said, you're losing credibility with me, all credibility with me, when you're arguing in the gag order hearing that it's not a violation of the gag order when Donald Trump reposts and retweets somebody else's attacks on witnesses, the court, uh, or jurors. Uh, Donald Trump didn't like that either. Now, look, Donald Trump has a long history of firing and falling in and out of love with his lawyers. He's fallen in and out of love with Alina Haba more times than I can count on this particular hot take. He's he's hired her. He's fired her. He used her in the E. Jean Carroll cases. He, he backbenched her in the E. Jean Carroll cases. He kicked her upstairs to be the head lawyer for his pack. He brought her back out to put her back at the council table in certain of these hearings about the New York Attorney General civil fraud case that was a loser. He fell in and out of love, really out of love, with uh, Joe Tacopina, fired Joe Tacopina after Joe Tacopina lost the first E. Jean Carroll case for $5.5 million, let Alina Haba take over, and she lost the E. Jean Carroll case for uh, much more than that, for $86.5 million. Now focus on Todd Blanche. Why, and this is what I'm going to posit on this hot take, why is Susan Necklace who had been sort of a backbencher, not even a co-first chair, really a second chair to Todd Blanche, meaning she was in the second position, co-pilot at best. Why is she making arguments to the judge? And now I've heard it all. Now they want advanced rulings and advanced orders from the judge about whether Donald Trump is going to violate the gag order again. We just had not one but two hearings about the gag order and Donald Trump violating it, the enhanced gag order. The judge has already sanctioned Donald Trump $9,000, $1,000 per violation of the gag order, which frankly is the limits of New York law under the judiciary law. But he said to him on now the third occasion, you're skating awful close to being put in jail. The judge says, let me remind you, I can do incarceration in jail for the next violation. So now you got Susan Necklace kind of being pushed by Donald Trump into the fray. And I mean, literally, I mean, there's reporting in the New York Times that when Alina Haba in the E. Jean Carroll case wasn't doing what Donald Trump wanted her to do and wasn't following his direction, he smacked her or pushed her on the back of her arm to make her stand up. Get up. <laughs> All right. So he, he sort of threw Susan Necklace to the wolves today in the courtroom and day whatever we are with the Trump trial and had her stand there with a a sheaf of a raft of documents that were, uh, these are, she said, and I'm paraphrasing, these are news articles, your honor, news articles. And we want you to pre-approve them that Donald Trump's allowed to, uh, to post them without violating the gag order. And the prosecutor stood up and said, Josh Steinglass and others stood up and said, I'm sorry, she wants an advisory opinion from the court. See, let me just tell you something. When you hear that phrase, advisory opinions, courts don't do or shouldn't do advisory opinions. They have to have a live case or controversy in front of them. They have to have somebody actually violating a gag order, about to, has violated the gag order. It's a lot of past tense in the law. You talk about what people have done in the past. When you're talking about future conduct, now you're in the world of injunctions. You want to enjoin or stop somebody from a bad act in the future. That's an injunction hearing. That's a whole different thing. And we're in criminal court. So we're not, we shouldn't even be talking about future conduct, right? This isn't minority report. We're not, we don't have the thought police. Tom Cruise isn't going to fly in, you know, and bash in the windows of Donald Trump's house because he violated the gag order or was about to. So you got, you got Susan Necklace, not Todd Blanche. That's my point. Being pushed by Donald Trump in front of the judge and saying, judge, we want pre-approval that this won't violate the gag order. And the judge says, I don't do pre-approvals. My advice to your client is that the gag order is clear on its face. The appellate court has upheld the gag order. There's no ambiguity in it. And, he, and when in doubt, 
he should steer clear of trying to violate the gag order. She's basically telling the court her client is about to violate the gag order once again. This is like the little boy that put his hand on the stove over and over again. And when he couldn't figure out that the burner was on, he used his face instead. That's what we're doing with Donald Trump. Donald Trump's like, well, that's 9,000. I wonder how many thousands of dollars Mershon will sanction me for before he actually puts me in jail. I dare him. I dare, this is what he's doing. I dare him to put me in jail, right? As like a bully. Let's describe jail for a minute, what that looks like. I have a, we have a colleague now, a contributor here on the Midas Touch Network, Judge Barbara Jaffe. She was a longtime judge on this Supreme Court in New York dealing with criminal cases just like Judge Mershon. She said she would have already put him in jail already. I would have already put Donald Trump in jail already. The jail is either in the back of the courthouse, sort of a holding cell jail, or there's a jail around the corner, a detention center around the corner that they can use for these purposes in state court. The, 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 the other option is Rikers Island, which really is for permanent assignment. That's where all misdemeanors in New York uh, get placed. If you're a misdemeanor uh, a criminal, you go to Rikers Island. There's some felons that go to Rikers Island for short periods of time as well before they get into a permanent place prison. So Donald, there, you know, Donald Trump keeps playing with fire here. Sick of the one size fits all method, especially when it comes to your erectile dysfunction treatment? Well, good news. Now you've got options with Hims. Hims is changing men's health care by providing access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hims provides access to doctor trusted ED treatment options such as chewable hard mints, brand name treatments like Viagra, or generic alternatives for up to 95% cheaper. The process is simple and 100% online. No uncomfortable doctor's visits. Answer a series of questions on their site and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option. If prescribed, your medication ships to you for free. No insurance is needed. If ED is getting you down, it's time you join the hundreds of thousands of trusted HIMS subscribers and get treated. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash legal AF. That's H I M S dot com slash legal AF for your personalized ED treatment options. Hymns.com slash legal AF. Hard mints are chewable compounded products which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription is required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. He's now cycling through lawyers that he falls in and out of love with. I'm surprised he's, that Susan Necklace, frankly, is even still with Donald Trump. Not 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 just because I'm, I'm surprised she's getting paid, probably from all these these uh, these uh, donor funds, all of these grifts that Donald Trump is doing. I don't know, all the Bibles and sneakers that he's selling. He's paying at least Susan Necklace. But she lost for him. I mean, Donald Trump hates losers. He used to call John McCain the, the uh, hero senator from Arizona who spent five years in a, in a uh, basically a concentration camp as a prisoner of war in, during Vietnam, called him a loser because he was captured. And he was a prisoner of war for this country. The guy who's Mr. Bone Spurs, who never served in office, uh, who never served in the military at all. So he doesn't like losers. And Susan Necklace lost for Donald Trump two years ago, 17 counts, felony convictions against his companies for tax fraud and business record fraud. So relevant and so close to what's going on right now in the courtroom that the judge wouldn't allow it in to go to the jury because it would be too prejudicial for them to learn that Donald Trump and Susan Necklace lost that trial two years ago. So how is she still around? You know, uh, but Todd Blanche, what, he, look, look, here's the reality. Everyone's worried. He's going to fire Todd Blanche and then ask for a delay. It's not, not so fast. Not so fast. In criminal cases, judges don't like delay. And judges don't like to be uh, a pawn uh, by a uh, criminal defendant who's trying to delay the inevitable, which is justice and the jury finding. So you don't get you don't get to fire your counsel that that easily. So I'm not really looking to that, although it makes for sexy headlines. Donald Trump fires counsel in order to delay the trial. I just don't think that's going to happen. 
But what is going to happen is that Todd Blanche is either going to have to stand up for himself. And we've seen these clips of Todd Blanche. We'll play one of them here. We see these clips of Todd Blanche looking very uncomfortable next to Donald Trump, increasingly uncomfortable next to Donald Trump. I've seen other clips at the end of a trial day or the beginning of a trial day where Susan Necklace is so far back she, and holding a clipboard, I thought she worked for the court system. And then I went, I, I, I like rubbed my eyes. Oh, wait, that's that's his co-counsel in the case who's now running into court asking for it. My, my client's about to violate the gag order again. A gag order, by the way, he doesn't even seem to understand Donald Trump. Because in front of Todd Blanche, who looks again like he's getting root canal without Novocaine when he's standing next to Donald Trump. He recently just said, and we've had it on the Midas Touch Network, he recently just said, Donald Trump, I'd love to answer that question, but I can't testify because uh, I've got a gag order. I mean, talk about Captain Confusion. This is the guy some people are thinking about restoring to the presidency. The guy that can't keep his eyes open. He falls asleep every day, every day, REM sleep in court, according to reliable court watchers. And he can't figure out that the gag order is not about in-court statements. It's about out-of-court statements, extrajudicial statements. It's not gagging him from testifying. The only thing that's stopping him from testifying is, I don't know, logic and the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. Short of that, I don't. There's no gag order, nor could there constitutionally, uh, civil <laughs> due process, civil rights wise, be a gag order against somebody testifying in their own case if that's what they so choose. And you see, you see in that we'll play the clip. Let's play that clip. What do you think well, I'm not allowed to testify. I'm under a gag order. I guess, right? I can't even testify at all. Now, we're going to be appealing the gag order. I, I'd love to answer that question. It's a very easy question. The easiest question so far. But uh, I'm not allowed to testify because this judge, who's totally conflicted, has me under an unconstitutional gag order. Nobody's ever had that before. And we don't like it, and it's not fair. Other people are allowed to do whatever they want to us, and I'm not allowed as a presidential candidate the leading candidate, the Republican Party nominee, and the one who's leading Biden by a lot, I'm not allowed to talk. Uh, there's never been any abuse like this before. This conflicted judge ought to get out of this case. He shouldn't be, he should not be having this case. He gives us nothing. It's such a rigged court. So I'm not allowed to testify uh, because of an unconstitutional gag order. We're appealing the gag order. And let's see what happens. Thank you very much. You see Todd Blanche there looking like, wow, <laughs> this is my client. This is the guy that's pushing me and doesn't agree with my decision making. Listen to this guy. Uh, we'll continue to follow it all right here on the Midas Touch Network and on this YouTube channel. Uh, help them get to 3 million free subscribers. And while you're at it, join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays. 8 p.m. Eastern time on a YouTube uh, hot, uh, let me try it again, on a podcast. That's the word. On a podcast we call, wait for it, Legal AF. It's at the intersection of law and politics. It's by lawyers who know what they're talking about at the intersection of law and politics. How refreshing. Wednesday, Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on this YouTube channel. On audio podcast platforms, wherever you get those audio podcasts from. And then you can follow me, Michael Popak, on all things social media at MS Popak. Slide over to YouTube, Midas Touch, playlist, contributors. Look for Michael Popak. If you like this one, this hot take, I don't know, I got like 1,200 more waiting for you <laughs> to enjoy. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legalaf. That's patreon.com slash legalaf.